Hey, good to see you. Not really see you, but hey, I know you're there in spirit. Anyway, look, it's Dr. Mattis here. Love my classes. Love talking about kinetics, but I'm really happy this is our last video in kinetics already. We're going to talk about half-lives. Half-lives are basically a plug and chug into a half-life equation. These equations over here, these wonderful little things, come out of the integrated rate laws. If half-life is the amount of time for 100% of something to become 50% of something, then basically in the integrated rate law, you start off with 100, and then for your concentration of whatever it is, concentration of A, it's 50% of the original. You plug that in where A is 1 half the original, and we can derive the lovely little equations that you see here. Okay. The most interesting thing about these equations is that if you look at the first order one, there's no original concentration. And that matches sort of what we know about half-lives at this point in your career as chemistry students. Half-lives typically are taught as a constant gig. Like I often bring up the half-life of P32. The half-life of P32 is 14 days. I know this because I used to work with it back in the day. Okay, the half-life of P32 is 14 days. It doesn't matter how much of the P32 you got. After 14 days, half of it's converted into sulfur 32. Another 14 goes by, half of it's converted. Another 14 days go by, half of it's converted. It's always 14 days. The original amount's changing because the original amount of the first half-life is 100% of whatever it is. The original amount of the second half-life is 50% of whatever it is. So the original amount is not always a constant. Okay, but in the first order equation, there is no concentration so the half-life's a constant. But if you look in the other two, there is a concentration term. It's right here on top, right there on the bottom. So let's we're going to have to explore that with some graphs. The easiest one we'll talk about first, though, is the first order one. Let's pretend we're talking about P32 of 14 days. OK? If we start with 30 uh, units of it, a uh, concentration of 30, after 14 days, I'm going to pretend I'm scaling this. 14 days, half of 30 is 15. So after 14 days, we'll get to 15. Okay, so if I can make a line there, I'll be impressed. I can't make a line there, so I'm not impressed. All right, it's hard to draw on a computer screen. Dink. Okay, so that's one half life. That's the first half life. After the second half life, it's going to go from half of 15, it'll take another 14 days. Trying to draw that out for a total 28 days, but it'll go down here to about seven and a half. It should be a straight line, but I don't have a straight line because my scaling's off. But it's a straight line leading down to 28 days. Okay, so your first half life is a straight line where the, everything's constant. Well, if we go to pretend it was second order, okay, up here, since a naught would start at 30, go to 15 for the first one. 30 goes down to 15 for the first one. The second one starts at 15. It goes down about 7.5. Well, A0 is on the bottom. So the number here on the bottom of that fraction is getting smaller, which means the value of the whole thing is getting bigger. So the half-life gets larger. So as A0 gets smaller, the half-life gets larger. So instead of being 14 days, the second half-life is going to go a little bit further out on that x-axis, and the whole thing's going to bow a little bit out to get to that 7.5. Zeroth order is the opposite. A naught's on the top up here, so the original amount's on the top. So as that gets smaller, the whole thing's just going to keep getting smaller. So t sub 1 half gets smaller. So if we go down to our graph, we start at 30, our ugly graph. We start at 30. The first half-life takes us down to our 15. Okay, but then the second half-life isn't going to take as long, so it's not going to spread out as far over the x-axis, so it's going to come in. So what I'm really talking about are the graphs of concentration versus time. If that concentration versus time data is a straight line, which you learned, okay, if in this it's a straight line, basically that, it's not a straight line, but the half-life time is constant. The half-life for the first one is 14 days. The half-life as you go to the second one is 14 days. Cool, you know, that's zeroth order. If the half-life keeps getting longer so that the 14 days extends outward and sweeps out further, then you get a second order gig. 
if now you get that perfectly straight line, I think I messed it up earlier. If now you get that perfectly straight line, it goes to 14 days, bows back a little bit, all right, and looks straight. That's your zeroth order one. And so basically you get zeroth order, first order, then second order. And you have to just measure the amount of time on the x-axis for that half-life. If the half-life is staying constant, okay, then you got a first order one. If the half-life is getting faster, that means a smaller t sub one half. Don't equate the two things. Okay. If that smaller half-life, okay, is zeroth order, if the half-life keeps getting larger, then it's second order. Hope that makes a little bit of sense. Have a good time with it. Learn it and like it. I'll talk to you later.